Hello, hello. Today is uh, May 19th, and we have a regular uh, governance uh, meeting. As we announced in the developer mailing list, we have a quite packed agenda for today. We have some news, we have a roadmap uh, updates review, though no all topics uh, have been submitted, and I'm guilty of, guilty of not submitting my full request. Um, then uh, Jenkins JEP process updates, technology updates, with many subtopics, duplicating Ruby runtime to determine what are the next steps, adopting Stepler, the GitHub issues of opening governance, uh, front of Jenkins revamp, uh, plugin end of life policy. As you may guess, we are, will unlikely reach these topics. Um, but um, yeah, let's start and see where we get. Uh, okay, so yeah, news. So the first and most important news, uh, we had uh, Google Summer of Code uh, announcements. This year we will have five projects, uh, I mean, five Jenkins projects, but there is also one project focused on Spinnaker. So projects, we have uh, Cloud Events plugin for Jenkins, Git credentials binding, uh, Jenkins remote monitoring with Prometheus, most likely, or maybe open telemetry, we will still discuss that. Security with the data for Jenkins Kubernetes Separator and semantic versioning, which is also subject for rename uh, from what I heard in uh, the chat. Uh, but yeah, so what it means, we have five quite important projects. Three are rather focused on uh, Jenkins in the cloud. One uh, semantic versioning is uh, required for SDLC stories. I mean, securing Jenkins delivery pipelines, we discussed at the previous contributor summit. And Git credentials, yeah, well, it's a must have because uh, Git is used pretty much on every Jenkins instance. So, and yeah, it's quite important, especially again, uh, usable pre security trends. So uh, improving credentials binding, I think would be important addition to the plugin. So these are topics. Today we had a kickoff uh, meeting for community bonding. We had something like 10 participants there, four of them were students. Um, and yeah, I was still, we'll still publish recording, but so far so good. We will also start a retrospective asynchronously because, yeah, there are some topics to discuss. Uh, as always, there are some struggles, etc. Uh, but yeah, overall, it seems to be good. And yeah, we start community bonding, so we encourage everyone to help students. If they reach out in the community, please welcome uh, the students. And yeah, if any of them is uh, watching, mm, welcome to the Jenkins community. Another um, at least updated that uh, we got multiple put applications which we were unable to accept. So right now I'm looking uh, into alternatives and if I find something, uh, I might come up with a budget request for this summer of autumn period uh, so that we could uh, run a program on LFX mentorship. Because here we had several uh, project ideas uh, which are quite important, uh, but uh, which we were unable to accept due to various reasons. So just uh, to show you what we have on the list, automatic specification, specification generator for REST API, again, not this year. Um, or custom Jenkins distribution service, again, not this year, or at least not this year in JSOC. Uh, uh, but it would be awesome to actually get it to the operational point. Uh, then plugin installation manager improvements, uh, uh, pipelines to this for Jenkins, all of these topics are quite important. So if we could have a program, it would be nice. But yeah, right now it's just heads up because I have a, nothing concrete to ask for. Um, and I still have an action item to actually um, uh, send an update uh, about our budget. Maybe one important topic. Uh, so we will uh, have uh, to move um, uh, out of SPI. Because, yeah, we discussed it with SPI. Uh, yeah, the original plan that, that was that we can use um, the SPI treasury as long as we need uh, when we were discussing it this in 2018. But as long as we need, and basically two years of transition, etc. So three years on transition. So basically I asked them, they said that it would be rather if uh, we migrate. So there is uh, no strict need to migrate it tomorrow. There are some action items from the Jenkins governance board, but uh, yeah, I think that we will need to go to LFX crowdfunding. 
Mm, I still have an action item to get to add other board members uh, to LFX crowdfunding uh, management, so so that it's not a bottleneck. And after that, uh, yeah, you can initiate the transition. And my another action item is to actually send a budget report. Um, but yeah, right now on our accounts we have something like fourteen thousand dollars. So from them, uh, almost eight thousand are GSOC. Money we received at GSOC uh, stipends to organizations. So, yeah, it's not like we have the insane amount of money, but yeah, we have never fundraised, and if needed, we could try fundraising. Okay. Any questions, concerns, or should we move on? Okay, then CDF talk nomination updates. Um, so last meeting we agreed that uh, I will be the nominee from the Jenkins community. So basically after that, uh, there was a need to uh, submit a nomination the statement. I shared this statement uh, with the governance board and with the developer mailing list. I got some feedback addressed to that, and after that I submitted um, before the deadline. So yeah, now it's submitted. Uh, you can find the statement somewhere in the developer mailing list. Um, but yeah, uh, we are waiting for the process to be announced. And on the related news, uh, CDF uh, has just announced um, uh, general member seats. I mean, uh, this year two seats uh, in the talk will be Selected from among uh, general members, and if you uh, know a contributor uh, from uh, from a general member, you can nominate them. So you can find us some here, here, technical oversight committee, under a description uh, for eligibility. But basically, any member of a general member of CDF, any employer can be nominated. So if you want. Consider doing that. So basically, what it would allow is increasing uh, well, volume of uh, Jenkins users and contributors in the CDF talk. Um, but yeah, let's see how it goes. Okay, more on. So uh, Raihan has released um, the release candidate for the next OCS baseline. Um, it's announced in the developer mailing list, and again, everyone is welcome to test it and provide feedback. Again, we have open questions about how we promote um, uh, release candidates better to facilitate feedback. Um, but yeah, the release is there, so hopefully somebody tests uh, that and provides feedback. Any comments about this release? Pretty straightforward. Is there any uh, things we're concerned about in general? In this release, uh, so there was a patch which we had to revert because yeah, there was a feature in Mozilla Firefox which uh, they implemented and then reverted. So Daniel has more details about that, I believe. I mean, the original patch has been in weekly releases for a few months now. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, only fairly recently uh, was di it discovered that it caused a regression, mostly in uh, HTML unit. And I think in the testing for that, it was also revealed that either the new patch or already my patch, Mark, you will know that, also caused, caused problems with form submissions being blocked. It may already have been in my patch. It, it was already in in your patch, and okay. the delta the revert has healed it, and the the change from Thomas uh, Thomas Grenier de la Tour also seems to have healed it. So we've got a potential fix. So we've one we've got the revert, and that's in the two point two eighty nine point one release candidate. I've confirmed it, and we've got a proposed address the problem that Firefox brings. 
also that's pushed up as a candidate needs more reviews still. Or at least I think that was what you would ask for, Daniel, was please, could we get more, more eyes to review this particular change? Right, yeah, uh, that was when I thought it would go into the weekly. I don't know what the current status is. Right. But yesterday it was, you know, fairly late changes in the pull request. I think we'll just take care of it. Uh, it would be nice to have the new patch already in point one. It doesn't sit right with me to revert something that's been in the weekly for quite a long time, but uh, it is what it is. Yeah, for me, it was important to revert it from the weekly because of how embarrassed I am that I didn't detect, didn't detect sooner the problem and chase it down. So I was aware I had a problem. I thought it was forms, forms modernization. I was wrong. It wasn't forms modernization for once that blocked a, a, a submit. So, yeah. At least uh, you tried to triage a bit. And thanks a lot for that. And thanks a lot for everyone who just realized that. So, and anyway, uh, the scope isn't that big in terms of web ports. Um, the scope in terms of uh, features we bring from weekly is also not terribly big because we didn't have major breaking changes. So we have tables to diffs, etc. in the previous LTS baseline and things like Ruby runtime, etc. we haven't merged it in time. So yeah, this release is relatively safe. Yes, I haven't created the change log yet and I hope to do that over the course of the next multiple days. Yeah. I'm not the best one to talk about this, this impact, but I know that uh, um, we, we, are, we have been seeing some failures on the PR5206, which is Jenkins 6902, uh, about SSH debump uh, from what on 72.6. And uh, it seems to break a few things. And uh, so I just, like a few seconds ago, marked this as a regression, I think. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah, yeah, I'm not absolutely sure. I didn't have the time to dig into it. But yeah, I'm not exactly sure why it was not mentioned more by people as a regression. Uh, but it seems to be one. If you look at the PR itself, uh, one person said that he had to, he or he had to, Go back to the 2.283 uh, before the 84 mm -hmm. uh, to, to get ba back to normal. So, uh, yeah, we are still assessing the impact and what is possible on, on Cloud this side. But, yeah, I, I'm not sure what is the, the last radius on this one right now. But it seems to be annoying, at least. Oh, and the worst case, so that's why we have at least candidates, because yeah, we still have two weeks uh, to make adjustments. Exactly. I mean, my, my point is that I'm not fully, fully sure yet, but I, I was about mm -hmm. pointing that uh, I didn't earlier today, I, I should have done that on the, the PR, pinging, you know, uh, typically um, team and, and Rayhan uh, to see what they think about backporting this one. Because, uh, well, uh, not backporting, actually, there's no fix yet, but, uh, you know, <laughs> thinking about, uh, well, making room for a potential calling fix in the but I don't know. Uh, talking yeah. about the SSHD bump. Yes. Yeah, that seems to be, I had an evaluation in JIRA. Uh, no, no. Yeah. yeah, I just looked at this yesterday. So, uh, yeah, I think it's, it does seem to be a regression, I think just affecting people using RSA keys only. Um, and it looks like it's best fixed by just updating SSHD again. They've published the tag that has the fix, but it doesn't seem to be on central. So maybe it's still being held up in release candidate status somewhere. I'm not sure. Yes. So I mean, SSHD, they have a process with voting. So similarly to Apache. Yeah. It's, uh, so it may be something like one week before the release and before the station actually release. And if something uh, is needed, you can drop a message to the developer mailing list. Um, for me, SSHD has another mailing list and you can ask to facilitate or that we can stage it uh, on our local infrastructure if it's truly really needed. Yeah. 
I mean, it might make sense to revert this in the LTS branch. I don't know. I do. So I don't have a strong way to get it, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks all. So anything else about the release candidate? Sure. Okay, let's move on then. So okay, it's 20 minutes and we still haven't finished news. Uh, so yeah, a quick update. So we have been in contact with Amazon to renew our sponsorship for AWS. We've been quite successful about that. Uh, the Jenkins board, um, uh, Olivier, Mark, uh, INCC, um, and Daniel, I believe as well, maybe not. Uh, but yeah, so what currently happens, uh, we have um, agreement from AWS to consider uh, to continue sponsorship, but uh, there is still open concerns about uh, how our infrastructure is organized because um, our um, Amazon account is still owned by CloudBees. And last time we had issues with that because uh, with uh, billing uh, um, on AWS, well, not the fifth, but uh, uh, so um, we discussed uh, our options and we agreed that we would rather proceed with detaching Jenkins entirely to the new account and initiate uh, the transition to CDF so that uh, we could uh, do basically what we did with Microsoft infrastructure before and we could uh, close this topic altogether. So right now, uh, this is pending. I think the big win there is that the cl because CloudBees owns it, only CloudBees employees were able to access it and if we get it migrated, then the, infer the entire infra team can manage it if they want. Yes, that's right. But uh, on the other side, I want to add something quite important. Um, this means that we now, this once we move that account to the CDF, we'll have to pay attention to the sponsoring because in the past, uh, when, I mean, Clubbies was paying for that account when we needed, so, which was quite useful. And so once we move that account to the CDF, I'm no, I don't think, I mean, I don't know yet how it will work because we have a limit of 10,000 per month that we can spend on infrastructure. Um, so we'll have to pay attention about the costs of that, that account as well. And we may have to reduce our infrastructure because we already, when we moved Azure account to the CDF, we had to reduce from 20K per month to 10K. And part of the workload was moved to the Amazon account. Um, last year, that, um, that account was sponsored by Amazon. Um, the sponsoring is renewed this year. But yeah, this, these accounts run critical services of the project. Yeah, so we will need to monitor that. Um, we also need to have someone uh, connected as a credit card. Hopefully, it will be the Continuous Delivery Foundation. Um, I raised a ticket to the CDF. I have meeting with Tracy tomorrow. Um, and then uh, this CDF talk on Tuesday. Um, and uh, I will see what we can do. But yeah, right now, it's, we just started that. But yeah, ultimately, Gavin is right. Until we move in and detach it completely from CloudBees, um, it will be difficult to have community contributions there in terms of management. Uh, I do know that Damien has reached out to DigitalOcean. I think I'm gonna add the board and Olivier to that thread. So that, but that might help keep your costs down too if we can spread out sponsorship for more clouds. Yeah, that would be nice because then we reduce the risk uh, on the one, I mean, once, once, one one cloud provider uh, removed the sponsoring that just reduced the risk uh, there. Keep in mind so, uh, maintainers, maintenance cost because maintaining multi-cloud setup uh, is not exactly cheap. And uh, yeah. you also have limited uh, bandwidth of the infrastructure team. But even if it's just like uh, mm -hmm. the spinning up the CI at Jenkins machines, that will reduce cost because you won't need as many of them on one cloud and that less maintenance than critical infrastructure and Kubernetes clouds and stuff. I agree. That, that's, that's a difficult balance to find because monitoring the cost also take time and yeah. uh, sending and communicate with all the people to, to find ways to reduce the cost also take time. So, um, yeah, what if but yeah, otherwise that, that's a really great news. Sorry. What if we had infinite money? 
like what we had to what we used to have with azure for four years <laughs> yeah it's like uh, yeah you go somewhere and to github which uh, enter show me the money submit done uh, yeah. it would be nice game where it was, but, yeah. but yeah otherwise with amazon account that's really nice because that's quite i mean okay that's so, it yeah. yeah anyway it was a quick heads up uh, but yeah, we are working on that so the next topic is from daniel about uh, travel with free note irc so daniel would you like to speak about that um yeah so um this kind of exploded today. Um, our IRC channels are on the Freenode IRC network, which is sort of hosting quite a bunch of open source projects. I think Linux, some Linux distributions, uh, PHP, all of their IRC channels on this network. And it looks like there's been kind of a, I mean, it's described as a hostile takeover of the network. Um, where previous, where the previous uh, admins are being forced to hand over uh, access to the infrastructure, and I mean, uh, I provided some links in 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 uh, the, the the notes, and it basically uh, has the, this page that Oleg has up with uh, links to basically the two points of view. Um, about a dozen or so volunteer staff uh, have resigned today um, and it's difficult to say what's going on really. Um, it's just something we probably should be aware of. Um, those uh, staff who have resigned are starting a new IRC network and of course uh, if we need to migrate elsewhere we may be able to consider other options as well um, in addition or as alternatives to IRC. Um, just, you know, something to keep in mind. I hope that there will be a clearer picture over the next uh, few days and weeks. Um, perhaps we can look at what are other projects who have perhaps a larger staff that can deal with drama like this um, decide to do or not to do um and uh do something similar yeah but, uh, i guess so there is a list here and here are projects that are already quite number projects announcing saying that they would be moving so whether they really would it's yet to be seen i mean to, to that note i think it's the same as when microsoft took over github everyone was quick to jump ship and then some people did and some people didn't well, i think the only real concerns are our private issues our private channels which as daniel pointed out are not heavily used anyways so i think the rest can wait a channels. bit uh, jenkins, okay. uh, jenkins security is located in private rc channel yeah and if you go over the security we also have um, rc bot running uh, which has can Sorry. full access to our GitHub. What was that? Hmm? Well, I didn't hear what you said. The what has okay. access to? Um, the Jenkins RC bot. Yes. So um, if you want a disaster scenario with somebody exploding access to this bot through free node uh, access and uh, wiping yes. out our repository, yeah, it's theoretically uh, possible. The bot doesn't have destructive commands. The like, only uh, I already renamed uh, Jenkins uh, CI slash Jenkins repository once. Yes, uh, renaming a repo is not destructive, Oleg. Um, the only destructive action that exists is uh, deleting a Jira component and moving the issues elsewhere. I, everything else is non-destructive. So I think yeah. I was, what I was trying to say is I think this is a, a high priority issue, but as Daniel pointed out, until a little bit of the dust settles a bit, I think it's a little premature to say, hey, we're jumping ship to this or that or whatever thing. Um, the only ones that were critical were CERT. I think CERT shouldn't, I don't know. Well, CERT, right. we can theoretically just delete or move to another channel because, to be honest, right. outside mailing list, there is not that much activity in the chat now. Right. Uh, most of the activity takes place in Jira. Um, the Cert general hasn't been really active recently. Um, perhaps something for us to be mindful that uh, from now on, um, we probably should move uh, private direct chats. Uh, I think the queries, I think uh, they are called on IRC uh, elsewhere. 
-hmm. I also don't think you should have those. But uh, okay, so on the high level, my vote is is still Gitter. It's uh, our matrix is centralized on that. But I think we need to spend time to investigate and make a decision. But I would like to, you know, as a, a recurring topic for me is to uh, standardize our thing because we're a little bit everywhere. We're spread out very thin all over the places. Yeah, maybe it's something uh, we really need to discuss. So regardless of Freenode, but yeah, Freenode uh, is another call for action. And since we have progress with Discourse, uh, maybe it's something we could actually try moving forward. Discourse so is the mailing list replacement, not the chat replacement. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but uh, for many of our queries uh, in uh, Jenkins, it's basically a coin board for the majority of users. It's, so, it's still worth yeah. investigating, even if we, you know, I agree though. I don't think discourse replaces chat, but we'll yeah, see. But we have uh, um, RC, we have Gitter, we have Slack now in many sub projects and CDF. So maybe getting rid of one of them is possible. Yeah, yeah but. Yeah, but there is a difference because in the case of RC, um, except, I mean, we already use GitHub by default in most of the projects and we only have RC for Jenkins infrastructure. Um, Jenkins hosting as well, I think. Yeah. So it's, it's, and it's not, and it's only, I mean, that's only concern a small group of people. So if, if tomorrow we decide to move to a different RC channel or use something else, Wow. I would be easy. It's not like if we have to move the committee from uh, the Jenkins guitar channel to somewhere else. The Jenkins channel on IRC is still pretty big. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, but you always have people staying on IRC, whatever you do. And, and I mean, I don't see it as an issue if people want to stay in the Jenkins channel just to discuss and ask questions, as long as other people answer questions. I mean, it's not officially the, the main communication channel anyway. But it is listed. And that's my point is we should be very clear on saying this is where people will be there available to help out. If people do it other places, that's fine. But we should be clear on this is the official yeah. place. I so, thought that we officially moved to Gitter for the Jenkins. No, we didn't. So we basically said that uh, whatever works, um, then the yeah, the current case is that we are coming to scatter across so many channels. So consolidating them uh, doesn't seem like the worst idea because, for example, this course could replace some mailing lists and I believe some cha chats because many chats actually operate in the QA mode and this course is quite good for QA. So, yeah, let's see. It's just on the topic we need to resolve now, unless somebody wants to drive at it. Yeah, can we can we please move on? We are already past half. Uh, yeah, I agree. So, any closing words on that? No. Okay, so roadmap updates. We have several um, open uh, pull requests. Um, actually, we have only two pull requests which are related to roadmap content. You can take a look at them quickly. Because again, I haven't submitted my pull request I was trying, planning to do. So one uh, update is from Caro on behalf on Cloud Native Seek. So they're basically what they are at Cloud, Native, Cloud Events support. It's a GSOC project uh, this year. And I believe that uh, we have a consensus that it's uh, reasonable to have. Um, then uh, the respect on the client plugin. So this one is a bit more complicated because we already have uh, two entries on the roadmap about Tipton. And to be honest, I'm not exactly sure what is the difference and your car is not here today. So for Tipton, we already have um, um, what we have, Tipton pipeline build steps, which was basically Tipton client plugin uh, alpha. Um, and we currently can move it to done. And we have Tipton Pipeline's execution engine, which was uh, making uh, uh, Jenkins Pipeline pluggable in terms of Pipeline execution engine and making uh, Tipton a first class citizen. Whether it's technically possible or not, it's yet to be decided, but uh, yeah, the idea was like that. Um, so the question is whether we want to at another topic uh, for Tipton because he basically duplicates this one, uh, but with this uh, another description. OK, 
Philippines? I'm not sure what your ask is. Like, it sounds reasonable to me. So, yeah, if you add that we will have basically three tick-pawn items, each of them would overlap with each other, so it might be a bit complicated. Yeah, so I think, Oleg, like what you said is that the Tekton, Tekton Pipelines build step is, in fact, the Tekton client plugin. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. So, so, so yeah, isn't that really saying that the thing that she added for Tekton client plugin is already there? Maybe we need to rephrase it to be Tekton client plugin um, yeah, rather maybe. than Tekton pipelines build steps. I, I don't know if that would have helped her realize it was not a, it was it was a duplicate because yeah. it, it seems to be a duplicate. I don't I don't see us adding duplicate entries into the roadmap as a benefit right now. Yeah, and um, so there is an update roadmap. So we have updated it after we discussed it at the last SIP meeting. Um, and right now, these features do not seem to be important enough to be put as separate roadmap entries. So maybe I'll just take action item to remove this part and replace that item you already have. Right. So because for me, Tekton client plugin is is more explicit than the Techline, Tekton pipeline build step just for my benefit, but I'm okay yeah, either way. We're just... Creating this roadmap item that would not take on client plugin. So, ah, yeah. got it, thank you. So it was a bit uh, a while ago, but yeah, it's basically what we have started. Okay, and the next is the docs and platform roadmap of this. Maybe Mark, you would like to speak about that? Yeah, so in the February, 2021 uh, contributor summit, we had add site search was one of the items listed. I believe it's done and released for both the plugin site and for Jenkins.io, for www.jenkins.io. Mm -hmm. And Jenkins on Kubernetes, we started it and we've got another person who's working on it now during our docs office hours, Asia and Australia time. So I think those are reasonable updates. Yeah, speaking of that, will we need uh, to create LFX mentorship for that? Right now, the person is doing it without LFX mentorship, but we would like to like to consider that for some time in the future. I think our, our idea was September-ish that we would consider doing a sponsored program. Yeah, and yeah, she could have, she could have really make sense to edit. We'll right, and sorry, the embarrassment for She Code Africa is it's already done, but we had agreed in February as, as part of the presentation that it should be on the roadmap. This is me doing it much belated. I not have much problems with it. So any objections? Okay, so all of it is straightforward. So we can just say that, okay. And we, we need to spend more time on refining the roadmap because it's a bit dated. Uh, we still have some items from the February Contributor Summit we didn't put there. We have another one on current one. And yeah, together with Mark, we also have a talk about how we did the uh, public drinks roadmap at Simbicon. So I guess we're on the hook to update this roadmap before we record. Um, for going feature, is there a reason that those roadmap items are not tagged for the board, the PRs? For board reviews, you mean? I don't, I don't think I've seen, yeah, I'm just like, we have auto reviewer on Jenkins.io that says, this is a board and this gets assigned to board, right? Yeah, I guess uh, it has broken at some point because I believe that code owners still configured uh, to review that, but you're right that now it doesn't happen. Yeah, so I think that, I mean, I don't think this needs to be discussed, like the roadmap yeah, items so necessarily need to be in each meeting. Fixed. Yeah. Okay, you can assign it to me or anyone can submit one line pull request. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think that we have agreement I will follow up because apparently uh, I'm, I'm not locked in uh, from Firefox. Uh, and uh, yeah, I was testing uh, the release candidates on Firefox. So yeah, let's move on. So Jenkins job process update. So there is a long discussion. Um, basically we agreed on uh, the most of the things I believe. So there is a pull request submitted uh, which addresses the agreements. We had a few iterations with Liam about how things should be worked with, etc. But I think that um, basically it's ready to go. 
so there are a few important changes. So we agreed on terminology on this. So instead of sponsor, we will use champion. So basically somebody who drives uh, the initiative without uh, practical changes in uh, how it operates. So yeah, we also replace um, um, the review process. So we introduce Jenkins community as an entity represented by our open governance process. So yeah, basically what we have for discussion on the mailing list, consensus building, then voting to the governance uh, meeting if needed, or if there is strong consensus, not even uh, spending time on the meetings. And yeah, basically the idea is that this approach replaces uh, BDA failure, BDA failure delegate, which was uh, the biggest bottleneck in all our current jobs. We also introduced advisor role. So the role for advisor is basically provide uh, consulting. This role is optional. So it's basically how sponsor works in uh, Java jobs. So it's a, an experienced contributor uh, who just helps uh, the job to happen. If somebody less experienced uh, is willing to submit a job and go through the process, but it's optional. So basically we reduce, uh, we remove BDFL delegate, we remove uh, BDFL uh, as a decision making entity and we as optional advisor, uh, but yeah, optional. So for example, yeah, if uh, JC is the most popular author of jobs, and if JC submits another job, then uh, I believe JC wouldn't need uh, an advisor to deliver on that. Just yeah, has left. Okay. Okay. And also, yeah, there is open question about what we do with BDFL in general, because yeah, basically BDFL was only used as a term in uh, JEP one. And well, personally, I was rather against introducing BDFL from the very beginning, even when it was a thing in the Python community, etc. And now I'm even more against about having this role. Uh, but uh, right now we haven't received the uh, explicit response from TK whether TK would like to step down as BDFL so that we remove uh, this role for good. Well, yeah, TK would still uh, remain uh, Jenkins creator, uh, TK would remain Jenkins governance board member, etc. And yeah, BDFL is just uh, getting rid of one of the roles uh, which does nothing. So question to board members and to contributors who work with the job process. Does it say, uh, look same to you? At the moment, it was mostly collaboration between me, JC, and Liam. But yeah, any feedback is welcome. Yeah. I need to do a more detailed review of like, I would like to to review it to think about it because I need to submit the JEP to proposing Java 11 as default. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, another important item that uh, since uh, we uh, have a synchronous process, so we intend to build a consensus, and if there is strong consensus, that we are fine. We agreed that we uh, would have um, seven days uh, review period after call for final feedback. So that if nobody shows up, we just merge. So it adds uh, seven days uh, in the process for any job acceptance, even if there is no consensus. But while well, taking our current situation, when uh, jobs stay around for months and years without actually being assigned to be the delegate, I think that this would be net improvement. If you have any other ideas how to ensure that everyone had an opportunity to voice their opinion, uh, please comment in the discussion. But yeah, right now I just try to do it in this way. Other comments? Yeah, terminology updates. So there is pending thread. Uh, there is one open question. What are we doing with historical change logs? And uh, there was split in opinions because some people think that we should clean them up. Some people think that we should keep them. Uh, so from people on the call, uh, are there any strong opinions? Yes, but I don't think it makes sense to go into detail here. Mm -hmm. 
So everyone, please go to the mailing list and comment. Yeah, I already, I already commented on the mailing list. Okay, uh, yeah, let's do so. Yeah, probably the remaining terms, uh, we still have a number of open terms. Basically, we didn't do much progress about that over the past two weeks. It's still something on my radars, but uh, yeah, there is nothing to approve right now. We still have terms like Jenkins controller port, etc., where we need uh, more feedback uh, before we accept that. So again, just moving on, but uh, yeah, this topic is where we definitely need feedback and uh, additional ideas because none of these terms seem to be good at the moment. Yeah, maybe documentation see if it could help Mark uh, if there is some bend wire. Oh, yeah, Daniel says that everyone needs to review, review his PRs. You mean uh, the Jenkins core ones, right? I mean, all of my PRs, but in this context, yes. Oh, yeah. So just request the uh, reviews from my, everyone on this call. I think that it would be fair. And yeah, let's try to get it over the line because yeah, terminology cleanup is definitely something we would like to progress until the next LCS baseline cut off in mid July or late July actually. But yeah, if we could uh, push these changes forward, it would be great. We discussed uh, participating in a hard commit push event on May 29th in the developer mailing list. Again, this focus on terminology cleanup. But taking the activity at the moment, it seems that we won't participate in this event officially. So maybe it's a question to Batiste uh, and to Arno. But yeah, right now it doesn't seem that we have organizers to run this event. This is. I commit a push thread somewhere here, uh, but it's uh, 29th, so it's uh, Saturday. And yeah, I guess everyone uh, has other things to do on Saturday. Okay, but yeah. Okay, so let's at least try to get this over the line. Uh, so yeah, request from inclusive naming initiative about help uh, with um, naming, inclusive naming marketing promotion. So several of our contributors have joined the inclusive, uh, inclusive naming initiative, including the Slack uh, meetings, um, because yeah, you may have seen that uh, there is a lot of pull requests uh, happening right now uh, in uh, Jenkins. So just to share some insights, uh, yeah, call this invested some time in uh, cleaning up um, and also there are other contributors. So I created terminology cleanup uh, project, uh, just that uh, there is a full request and you can see that we have uh, almost 70 recent pull requests. So yeah, and the people participate. So I think that taking our history and decisions we made in August, it would be nice if we could um, participate in uh, and help uh, with the naming initiative. At the moment, we are looking for some more reports, promotion, and maybe uh, having an interview with a Jenkins project representative. So I think that all is reasonable. I wonder whether anyone would like to be such a representative. I, I just don't have the bandwidth to take on anything more right now. And I think we should identify someone outside this group. That might be. So well, I was thinking about just uh, inviting Alex Earl since he was doing the, leading the effort uh, this summer, and he is an author of uh, STM blog post. So. If Alex would be available, I think it would be great. But again, I'm not sure what this case of availability these days. And Alex, so. Yeah, I also have a lot of things on my plate. Same for Mark, I believe. Um, yeah, for Woody, it's also uh, uh, university season, etc. 
Uh, Evelina is also busy from what I know. Yeah. She's an anthropologist, uh, she cannot join the today's meeting. So, yeah, maybe we, uh, my action item is to actually send a public call. Uh, but yeah, I think that it would be important for us to participate to some extent. To some extent. Okay. And separate related topic is actually about official joining of the Inclusive Autonomy Initiative as a project community. So just uh, so there is inclusive autonomy, uh, just to provide some feedback, it was basically started by CNCF and a few other com funding companies. Um, so yes, yeah, CNCF is a main facilitator now. So Priyanka Sharma is uh, GM in CNCF and also one of the of leaders of this project, also you, many of you know Steven Augustus. He is also one of co-founders and many other active contributors. Then yet yeah, Cisco, IBM, both of them are like Jenkins contributors. Same for Red Hat. And uh, this, what do they have? They have related projects like um, conscious language, inclusive terminology, by Kubernetes, etc. So we can easily just add Jenkins there by Jenkins community or whatever terminology in Jenkins. So this uh, looks straightforward, and I think that we could do that. We also need to, uh, we will need to add uh, landing uh, endpoints. We have some uh, in advocacy and outreach seek, uh, but I think that um, yeah, actually aggregating uh, this content would be still uh, beneficial to the Jenkins community regardless of us uh, participating in the initiative officially. So what do you think about that? Would it uh, make sense for us to join this list, etc.? I am always, I'm always worried about taking on more responsibility without finishing the stuff we already started. I'm same with Kevin. Uh, if we can find someone else, we can drive that, that thing. That would be really great. But we, I mean, we already. Currently, I'm driving to the naming, I mean, the technology cleanup. So after Marky and Alex stepped down, uh, yes, I inherited it. So I... Basically, uh, about the implementation, it would be rather me doing all this like work. Uh, it's rather a question about feasibility, whether we want to have it happen. It's not a big, a big deal in terms of time. At the moment, I would personally like to pass. I mean, I think it's a good thing to do, mm -hmm. but I am so concerned about how many projects we have half started. And I don't want to advertise the fact that it's like get people like, hey, look, Jenkins is starting this progress. I'd rather us say, hey, we're done this progress and then add it to the list. Well, but but isn't this one, see, I'm, I'm the other direction with this one because this is a project we've already started and all it's doing is providing another link to our, our terminology update. So I, I don't, this particular one, I don't think adds any significant burden to us that we don't already have. So my, 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 I'm just wondering if we could maybe reach out to one of the people who help with the with the naming, renaming. So maybe one of those people can step up and help on that initiative. Mm, yeah, it's a valid approach. So and uh, yeah, currently we um, work with several contributors, and so the inclusive naming initiative, Angelic uh, Jaff, uh, Karen Talbert, uh, uh, Thierry Wesselenka, they joined um, already these slugs. Uh, we've been active because, for example, Thierry created some tools for discovering um, terminology on screenshots. Um, then yeah, we have some stories to share about governance, how we approach the decision making in a big project. So, just by sharing the experience, we already contribute uh, to this initiative. And uh, I don't think that there would be a big overhead. Um, and but yeah, I understand the uh, given point as well. And if you could find someone who would take leadership, maybe among uh, current uh, contributors, I think it would be really good. So do you note it? Um, let's see. So I guess for that, we again need a public call. And yeah, the same for CDF. So for CDF, uh, there is also a list of members. I will be bringing up uh, our CDF joining because CDF already has inclusive naming etc. Uh, uh, interoperability seek uh, and terminology cleanup in that project. So for CDF, it makes sense uh, to join uh, this list. And for CDF, it's actually free. 
because yeah, they just play participated in the uh, in meeting because of many initiative and they are still defining what would be the membership fees, etc. The membership fees uh, seem to be a bit high at the moment, but uh, yeah, for the CDF as a non-profit, it's free. So maybe CDF will join and well, maybe we will also get some help from the CDF marketing team in terms of uh, promotion and benefit related communications. I don't want uh, to have Jenkins as a showcase of uh, inclusive naming cleanup because firstly, we are quite bad in inclusive naming cleanup, in my humble opinion. Uh, but at the same time, we are working on this. So I think that being represented there would make sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else about that? Okay. Yeah, we are closing time. Should we just vote on adopting Stepper as a sub project? Because it seemed uh, quite uh, straightforward. I thought it was already done, so I'm on board with adopting yeah. it. Yeah. Plus one from me. Plus one to vote on it, and plus one from me that, to vote to approve. Does that mean that we would move the Stapler Git repository to the Jenkins CI organization, or we keep the Stapler under the Stapler organization? Well, in principle, it's to be decided, but the Jenkins governance would apply there officially. And uh, yeah, currently, it's Daniel and uh, JC as Stapler admins. So JC is already on board. I believe that uh, Daniel hasn't voted. Um, so I mean, it Daniel makes sense to. I mean, it makes sense to integrate Stapler into the Jenkins project uh, if KK is okay with that. I don't have a strong opinion on keeping the org separate. Uh, we could do it fairly cleanly by by just keeping the org separate and you know adding a, a few more contributors as admins, and then we're done. Um, Plus, uh, but if we keep the org, we need to throw out a bunch of folks who haven't contributed in the last decade um, because uh, it seems weird to have these, you know, old accounts around. That's yep. okay. so. What we will be definitely doing is moving idea stepler plugin because I believe we have a consensus about um, renaming it to Jenkins plugin because nobody else uses. Uh, uh, stepler enough to really need uh, integration with IntelliJ IDEA. And uh, for that, I believe we have a consensus on the mailing list, unless somebody is opposed. The same happened with NetBeans plugin. NetBeans plugin is already within the Jenkins CI GitHub organization. So basically, they will be under the Jenkins CI roof, or whatever happens. Um, but uh, yeah, for stepler, I think that yeah, moving repositories is rather implementation detail. Uh, so, but yes, yeah, Stepler anyway goes to kind of Arctic part of our sub projects. I mean, uh, as discussed in the mailing list, I don't think that we should recommend it uh, for using outside Jenkins. Um, so, well, basically, it will, will be just uh, our heritage. And as Jesse said, there is no practical way we would uh, ever remove Stepler from Jenkins. So. Yeah, I guess it's a small coding exercise for anyone if you want to try. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I think it would be natural if we just take it over a future. Yeah. Um, so just uh, Daniel, you, say, you think that Kiki's approval is a must, right? Because Kiki belongs to these uh, contributors who haven't contributed for a while to Stepler. I mean, uh, it's kind of his project in a sense. If if I were if I were the okay. admin of a repo in Koska's namespace, I wouldn't move it out there without his approval either. And this is not that dissimilar to me. Okay, I agree. So I'll uh, try to get explicit approval from Kiki. So yeah, we're losing people. So do we want to proceed with other topics or do we want uh, to shut down for now? I think we can shut down for now. Yeah, so what do we have? Uh, duplicating program runtime, just let's try to get the progress in the mailing list. 
because it feels like job is almost done, uh, blog post is almost done, so we should rather push it forward. GitHub issues, yeah, we can uh, keep discussing it in the community, but I don't think that there are blockers for experimenting. And the front of Jenkins, there is no hurry at all for that. And again, we can discuss in the mailing list. Again, I don't know why policies question deserve for this event time meeting. So thanks everyone. And yeah, thanks again for your time. Maybe we didn't need to switch to weekly meetings or whatever, but yeah, hopefully we won't be have so many topics say in the next two weeks. Yeah. Last but not least, don't forget about Contributor Summit. And if you have ideas about agenda, topics, tracks, please comment there. Thanks, Alex. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you all. Yeah, bye.